Welcome to this presentation. I will be going through 25 multiple choice questions covering different aspects of neurophysiology. Each MCQ has four options of which one is correct. Brief explanations related to the questions will be provided. Question 1. Which of the following is not true regarding oxytocin? It has a role in lactation. It has a role during parturition or childbirth. It is primarily produced in the supraoptic nucleus of the hypothalamus. It is a polypeptide hormone. And the correct answer is Option C. Option C is not true. The other three are true. Oxytocin is primarily produced in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. It is then released from the posterior pituitary. It has a role in lactation, in milk ejection. Oxytocin secretion is increased during labor and causes uterine contraction. Oxytocin is a polypeptide hormone. It is synthesized primarily by the magnocellular neurons in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. It is stored in the herring bodies of the posterior pituitary from where it is released into the bloodstream. It is a neural hormone, that is a hormone released from nerve cells. It has been shown to be related to social bonding. Potential therapeutic use of oxytocin is being studied in conditions like autism to try to improve social responsiveness. Question 2. The resting membrane potential of a neuron is plus 55 millivolts, plus 70 millivolts, minus 55 millivolts, or minus 70 millivolts. And the correct answer is D minus 70 millivolts. Minus 55 millivolts is the action potential threshold. The resting membrane potential or RMP of a cell is the voltage difference across the cell membrane during rest. The RMP of neurons is minus 70 millivolts. This means that the voltage inside the cell is 70 millivolts less than the voltage outside. In the resting stage, sodium concentration is higher outside the neuron, while that of potassium is higher inside the neuron. The RMP of skeletal muscle cells is about minus 90 millivolts, and that of smooth muscle cells is about minus 60 millivolts. Question 3. Damage to the Broca's area results in conduction aphasia, expressive aphasia, nominal aphasia, or receptive aphasia? And the correct answer is B. Expressive aphasia. So damage to the Broca's area results in expressive aphasia. 
conduction aphasia is due to damage to the arcuate fasciculus. Nominal aphasia is due to damage to the angular gyrus, while receptive aphasia is due to damage to the Wernicke's area. This picture shows the different speech and language areas of the brain, the Broca's area in the frontal lobe, the Wernicke's area in the temporal lobe, the arcuate fasciculus connecting the Broca's and Wernicke's areas, and the angular gyrus in the parietal lobe. So in expressive aphasia, there is normal comprehension but difficulty in speaking. In receptive aphasia, there is fluent speech but there are comprehension problems. In conduction aphasia, the person is not able to repeat what he or she hears but the speech is fluent. In anomic or nominal aphasia, the subject has difficulty naming or finding the right words. Question 4. Alpha waves on the EEG have a frequency of less than 4 hertz, 4 to 7 hertz, 8 to 12 hertz, or 13 to 30 hertz. And the correct answer is Eight to twelve hertz. So alpha waves have a frequency of eight to twelve hertz. Delta waves, which are prominent during stages three and four of non-REM sleep, have a frequency of less than four hertz. Theta waves, which are prominent during stages one and two of non-REM sleep, have a frequency of four to seven. While beta waves have a frequency of 13 to 30 hertz. So alpha waves are seen when the person is awake but relaxed with eyes closed. Beta waves are seen when the person is awake with eyes open. This is a pictorial representation of the four types of EEG waves. Question 5. Which of the following is true regarding REM sleep? REM stands for rapid eye movement. Normal sleep begins with REM sleep. As sleep progresses, REM periods decrease. Normally, there are 8 to 12 REM periods during a typical night's sleep. Babies spend more time in REM sleep compared to adults. And the correct answer is D. Babies spend more time in REM sleep compared to adults. A is false because normal sleep begins with non-REM sleep. B is false because as sleep progresses, REM periods increase both in frequency and in duration. C is false because normally there are between 4 and 6 REM periods during a typical night's sleep. And D is true. In newborns, at least 50% of sleep duration is REM sleep. In adults, it is less than 25%. As you can see, in a typical night's sleep, REM periods increase in length and frequency as the sleep progresses. And this is a graph showing the proportion of REM sleep according to age. In newborns, REM sleep accounts for more than 50% of total sleep, whereas in adults, it is less than 25% and it is even less in the elderly. Question 6. Which of the following is an inhibitory neurotransmitter? Is it acetylcholine, 
ग्लूटेमेट ग्लाइसिन और नोरड्रीन एंड द करेक्ट आंसर इज सी ग्लाइसिन the other inhibitory neurotransmitter is gaba which is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter the main excitatory neurotransmitter is glutamate question 7 which of the following is correct regarding action potentials in neurons during depolarization there is closure of sodium channels the action potential causes reuptake of neurotransmitter from the synapse the action potential opens voltage gated calcium channels the relative refractory period precedes the absolute refractory period and the correct answer is See, the action potential opens voltage gated calcium channels a is false because during depolarization there is opening of sodium channels b is false because the action potential causes release of neurotransmitter into the synapse and d is false because the absolute refractory period precedes the relative refractory period question 8 which of the following is true regarding ionotropic receptors they are slower in action than metabotropic receptors they are mediated via g proteins they are mediated via second messenger systems nmda receptors are ionotropic receptors and the correct answer is D NMDA receptors are ionotropic receptors. A is false because ionotropic receptors are much faster than metabotropic receptors. B and C are false because ionotropic receptors act via ion channels. In this slide, I have listed the key differences between ionotropic and metabotropic receptors. those who are interested can pause and note down the details question 9 a lesion in the left cerebellar hemisphere typically results in left sided dysmetria a nystagmus with fast component maximal towards the right right sided this diado cocainesia Truncal ataxia, and the correct answer is a left-sided dysmetria. B is false because if there is nystagmus, the fast component would be maximal towards the side of the lesion. so in this case towards the left lesions of the floculo nodular lobe produce severe nystagmus and vertigo and c is false because a left cerebellar hemisphere lesion would result in left sided dis diado cocainesia and d is false because truncal ataxia is typically seen in lesions of midline vermis Question 10 the satiety center in the hypothalamus is located in the suprachiasmatic nucleus supra optic nucleus lateral hypothalamus or ventromedial hypothalamus and the correct answer is D 
the ventromedial hypothalamus. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is important for circadian rhythm. ADH or vasopressin is produced in the supraoptic nucleus of the hypothalamus and it is then released from the posterior pituitary. The hunger center is located in the lateral hypothalamus. Question 11. Which of the following is true regarding dominance in cerebral hemispheres? The dominant hemisphere is also called representational hemisphere. Damage to the dominant hemisphere typically affects visual spatial functions. The left hemisphere is dominant in about 70% of right-handers. The right hemisphere is dominant in about 15% of left-handers. And the correct answer is B. The right hemisphere is dominant in about 15% of left-handers. A is false because the dominant hemisphere is also called categorical hemisphere. Damage to the dominant hemisphere typically affects language functions, while damage to the non-dominant hemisphere typically affects visuospatial functions. C is false because the left hemisphere is dominant in more than 95% of right-handers. D is true. In left-handers, the left hemisphere is dominant in 70%. The right hemisphere is dominant in 15% and there is no clear dominance in about 15%. Question 12. Which of the following is correct regarding insulin-like growth factor 1 or IGF-1? IGF-1 level is increased in acromegaly. IGF-1 is mainly secreted by the intermediate lobe of the pituitary. IGF-1 is also called somatomedin A. IGF-1 stimulates the production of growth hormone. And the correct answer is A. IGF-1 level is increased in acromegaly. B is false because IGF-1 is mainly secreted by the liver. C is false because IGF-1 is also called somatomedin C. It is IGF-2 that is called somatomedin A. And D is false because it is the other way around. Growth hormone stimulates the production of IGF-1. Question 13. Which of the following is correct regarding the rods and cones of the eye? The fovea does not contain any cones. Rods are mainly involved in color vision. Cones are more sensitive to light than rods. There are far more rods in the eye than cones. And the correct answer is D. There are far more rods in the eye than cones. A is false because the fovea does not contain any rods. B is false because cones are involved in color vision. C is false because rods are more sensitive to light than cones. And D is true. Rods outnumber cones by a ratio of 20 to 1. This picture 
shows the location of the fovea in the center of the macula. The graph on the left shows that the fovea is rich in cones and does not have rods. The figure on the right shows that overall there are more rods than cones, but in the central part, that is the fovea, it is dominated by cones and there are three types of cones for the three primary colors, red, blue and green. Question 14. Which of the following is the correct sequence during an action potential? I have listed four possible sequences. Please go through them and choose the correct option. The correct answer is Stimulus followed by depolarization, repolarization and hyperpolarization. This is a pictorial representation of the action potential. So initially the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts. After stimulus the, rest, the membrane potential becomes less negative. Once it reaches minus 55 millivolts, which is the threshold for generation of an action potential, the first phase is the depolarization, where the membrane potential goes up to plus 30 millivolts, followed by repolarization. And hyperpolarization is the phase where the membrane potential becomes more negative than even the resting membrane potential. Before it comes back to the resting membrane potential. So the correct sequence is stimulus followed by depolarization, repolarization and hyperpolarization. Question 15. Which of the following hormones is not secreted into the circulation by the hypothalamus? CRH, GnRH, TRH or vasopressin? The correct answer is D. Vasopressin which is also known as ADH. It is secreted by the posterior pituitary. Vasopressin is synthesized in the hypothalamus but secreted into the circulation from the posterior pituitary. I have listed the important hypothalamic, anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary hormones in this slide. Those who are interested can pause and note down the details. Question 16. Which of the following is correct regarding melatonin? Melatonin is secreted by the thymus gland. Melatonin secretion is higher at night than during the daytime. Melatonin is a precursor of serotonin. Melatonin is used for the treatment of narcolepsy. And the correct answer is B. Melatonin secretion is higher at night than during the daytime. A is false because melatonin is secreted by the pineal gland. C is false because it is the other way around. Serotonin is a precursor of melatonin. Serotonin after undergoing acetylation and methylation gets converted to melatonin. 
melatonin is used for the treatment of insomnia. Question 17. Which of the following is correct regarding the physiology of vomiting? The chemoreceptor trigger zone or CTZ is located in the area antrema in the floor of the third ventricle. The main receptors in the CTZ are beta-adrenergic receptors. The CTZ is located outside the blood-brain barrier. The CTZ is also known as the integrative vomiting center. The correct answer is C. The CTZ is located outside the blood-brain barrier. A is false because the CTZ is located in the area post in the floor of the fourth ventricle. B is false because the main receptors in this region are 5-HT3 and D2 receptors. That is the reason why antagonists at these receptors have anti-emetic effect. D is false as the CTZ is distinct from the integrative vomiting center which is located in the medulla. Question 18. Which of the following is correct regarding apoptosis? It is a type of cell necrosis. It may be regarded as programmed cell proliferation. It is almost always pathological. Enzymes called capsaicis play a crucial role in apoptosis. And the correct answer is D. Enzymes called capsaicis play a crucial role in apoptosis. A is false because apoptosis is distinct from cell necrosis. While apoptosis may be considered to be normal cell suicide, necrosis is abnormal cell death. B is false because apoptosis may be regarded as programmed cell death. C is false because apoptosis is almost always non-pathological. So D is the correct option. Question 19. Which of the following is correct regarding evoked potentials? EPs typically measure the electrical activity of the brain in response to stimulation of specific motor pathways. In the brainstem auditory evoked response test, electrical impulses are administered to electrodes attached to the arm or leg. To record somatosensory evoked potentials, the patient looks at a screen which displays checkerboard patterns. The visual evoked potential testing has diagnostic relevance in multiple sclerosis. And the correct answer is D. The visual evoked potential testing has diagnostic relevance in multiple sclerosis. A is false, false because EPs measure the response to stimulation of specific sensory pathways. B is false because electrodes are placed on the scalp and ears. C is false because this applies to recording visual evoked potentials, not somatosensory work potentials. So in this slide, I have listed the key features of the three main types of work potentials. Those who are interested can pause and note down the details.
Question 20. The sensory deficits seen in brown sequard syndrome, which refers to hemisection of the spinal cord, include? I have listed four options. Please go through them and choose one. And the correct answer is C. There is contralateral loss of pain and temperature and ipsilateral loss of fine touch. Pain and temperature sensations are carried by the spinothalamic tract which crosses over at the same level of the spinal cord while fine touch sensation is carried by the dorsal column which ascends up the spinal cord on the same side and crosses over only at the level of the medulla. So in relation to our question hemisection of the spinal cord at a particular level results in contralateral loss of pain and temperature and ipsilateral loss of fine touch in areas below the lesion. So in brown sequard syndrome, the damaged tracts include the spinothalamic tract, dorsal column and corticospinal tracts. So damage to the spinothalamic tract results in contralateral loss of pain, temperature and crude touch, while damage to the dorsal column results in ipsilateral loss of fine touch, proprioception, vibration, pressure and two-point discrimination. And damage to the corticospinal tract results in spastic paralysis. Question 21. Which of the following is true of saltatory conduction? It refers to conduction in unmyelinated neurons. It is much faster than continuous conduction. The action potential travels along the length of the axon but skips the nodes of Ranvier. Multiple sclerosis is characterized by excessive saltatory conduction. And the correct answer is saltatory conduction is much faster than continuous conduction. A is false because saltatory conduction refers to conduction in myelinated neurons. C is false because it is the other way around. The action potential skips the main length of the axon and jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. And D is false because multiple sclerosis is characterized by loss of saltatory conduction because of demyelination. So this is a picture of a myelinated neuron. As you can see, there are interruptions in the myelin sheath and these are called as nodes of Ranvier. In saltatory conduction, the action potential jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. Question 22. Which of the following is not true regarding the internal capsule? It has an anterior limb, genu and posterior limb. It is typically spared in pure motor stroke. It contains both sensory and motor fibers. Aphasia is a feature of cortical stroke rather than internal capsule subcortical stroke and the correct answer is B. B is not true. The other three are true. P 
pure motor stroke results from damage to the posterior limb of the internal capsule due to a lacunar infarct. So this picture shows the different parts of the internal capsule, the anterior limb, genu and posterior limb. The anterior limb lies between the head of the caudate nucleus medially and the lentiform nucleus laterally, while the posterior limb lies between the thalamus medially and the lentiform nucleus laterally. And this is a scan showing an acute lacunar infarction involving the posterior limb of the internal capsule and the clinical presentation is likely to be a pure motor stroke. Question 23. What is the normal physiological relationship between dopamine and prolactin? Dopamine has no effect on the secretion of prolactin. Dopamine inhibits the secretion of prolactin. Dopamine stimulates the secretion of prolactin. Prolactin stimulates the secretion of dopamine. And the correct answer is B. Dopamine inhibits the secretion of prolactin. Dopamine released from the hypothalamus inhibits the secretion of prolactin by the anterior pituitary. Dopamine is also called prolactin inhibitory factor. Antipsychotics that are non-selective dopamine receptor antagonists can lead to hyperprolactinemia by removing the inhibitory effect of dopamine on prolactin secretion. Hyperprolactinemia can also occur due to a prolactin secreting tumor of the anterior pituitary called prolactinoma. Question 24. Which of the following is correct regarding the physiology of circadian rhythm? Adenosine formed by the breakdown of ATP stimulates waking up from sleep. Among psychiatric disorders, circadian rhythm disruption is typically associated with OCD. The photoreceptors of the eye send projections to the suprachiasmatic nuclei of the hypothalamus. The watch genes play an important role in maintaining the circadian rhythm. The correct answer is C. The photoreceptors of the eye send projections to the suprachiasmatic nuclei. A is false because adenosine promotes sleep. B is false because circadian rhythm disruption is typically associated with bipolar disorder. And D is false because clock genes play an important role in maintaining the circadian rhythm. Question 25. Regarding ion transport, which of the following is correct? Ion channels are present only in neurons and not in neuroglia. Ion channels are intranuclear polysaccharides. The resting membrane potential is primarily maintained by calcium channels. The sodium potassium pump or the sodium potassium ATPase pumps sodium out of the cells and potassium into the cells. And the correct answer is
D. The sodium potassium pump pumps sodium out of the cells and potassium into the cells. And in each cycle, it pumps three sodium ions out of the cells and pumps two potassium ions into the cells. A is false because ion channels are present in all cells, whether neurons or neuroglia. They are membrane proteins. C is false because the resting membrane potential is primarily maintained by the sodium-potassium ATPase pump. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. Hope you found the material useful. Thank you for watching.